I think the most important thing that I think a lot of agents lose sight of is to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and really see if I was a consumer, how would I perceive this coming across my feed? Try to empathize more with, with who they are and what they want to see. Welcome back to the Agents Who Crush It in Real Estate, the podcast where we dive deep into the strategies, stories, and secrets of the most successful realtors in the business. I'm your host, Lindsay Favaza, and joining me today is Nick Kozak. Nick isn't just any realtor. He's a Southeastern Massachusetts native who has turned his passion for real estate into a thriving career. Starting as an investor, remodeling local single family homes, Nick has developed a keen eye for what makes a property truly stand out. But what really sets Nick apart in his unique approach to connecting with clients and the market through his creative and often hilarious real estate related videos. With a background in art and design and education, Nick brings a fresh perspective to buying and selling homes, offering not just transactional advice, but a vision for what a home can become. His dedication to his clients, combined with his market savvy and negotiation skills, has made him a go-to expert in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. So if you're looking for inspiration on how to elevate your real estate game or just a good laugh for out of some of Nick's viral videos, you're in the right place. Let's dive into the world of real estate with a man who knows how to crush it, both in sales and creativity. Nick Kozak, welcome to the podcast today, my friend. Hello. Thank you. You're so welcome. I hope I did you justice in my in intro. It sounded like it. Sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> it's always awkward when you're sitting there listening to someone, you know, go on and on about you, but you earned it, my friend. Thank you. So take us back to the beginning. You were going to school for art and design and all of these things. How did you get into real estate? What was that path for you? Yeah. So, um, I was an art teacher. Uh, I taught elementary school, middle school, high school, you know, I kind of went through all the all the levels just to kind of see if if it was for me still and uh you know it had it had its perks but i i really wasn't into teaching and uh so i started to flip houses um i started to get into that with my my father and uh did a couple every year and it was really fun i really enjoyed it a lot and and then i really enjoyed real estate in general uh, so then I just decided, why don't I get my license? Um, I can sell houses. I can still experience houses and advise on design and stuff. But um, I won't assume all the risk of, of buying a property, trying to get a profit out of it after I flip it. Um, I can just sell houses and help people find houses and sell their houses instead. And and still experience that stuff. Um, yeah, finding... still be involved, but not have to w bear the whole thing on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah. And then finding those houses were uh, getting more and more difficult every year. Yes. Uh, yep. To find ones with uh, good meat on the bone that were a good deal. So when did you start doing the whole flipping thing with your dad and stuff? Uh, that was probably 2014, 2015. Yep. Um. And then around 2016 is when I did my last flip without my dad. Um, I did one on my own. And that's when I was like, oh, you know, it was a tight one. I, yeah. I had a small profit on it. And then I, that's when I decided, why don't I just get my real estate license and do it? Cool. Um, did, your, did you and your dad like share, you know, this love of like construction and rehab and stuff like that? Was your dad kind of in that kind of business or... How did he kind of get involved with you on it? Um, no, he was actually um, CEO of, of Credit Union. Um, wow. And then he was getting close to retiring at that point and just looking for stuff to, to do to, to keep him busy and yeah. knew that I had an interest in it. So we kind of just, you know, he he followed my, my vision on that stuff. And then we had construction people that we knew that Perfect. we used together. And yeah. That's awesome. That must have been a great bonding, though, too, still just doing that process with him. So that's really cool. Yeah. So your 
flipping houses, you're like, oh God, this might not be like long-term plan. So maybe I'm going to get my license. So tell us like what that process was of getting your license and when you got first started in the business. Yeah. So 2017, I think it was, I uh, wanted to get my license. I uh, knew Jennifer Mello from high school mm -hmm. and I liked the brand that they were presenting. And um, I, I kept seeing their signs around town and so I approached her and said, you know, hey, I'd like to, to get into real estate. I figured, you know, maybe eventually I could come work for your company once I get some experience because I, I didn't know. Um, yeah. You know, I thought they had an image that, you know, they were all really successful. And I thought, oh, you know, they only hire successful agents. You have to work up to it. Yeah. 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 So she said, oh, no, just you can just start here now. So I was like, OK. So I got my license and then I started working there. Um, basically, I just kind of shadowed her, um, did like a, a ride along with her and go to appointments and stuff like that. And I, I learned quickly that way. And then I um, started doing all of the uh, typical newbie things like door knocking and cold calling and calling expireds and all that stuff. And Paying your dues. You know, yeah. The... the <laughs> The part of the business that we don't really like, um, <laughs> but I, you know, I did that for a little while and that got me some business. And then as you know, you know, the more business you, you do and the more you produce, then the more people want to use you. Mm -hmm. um, they, they want to use the, the busier people, the ones that, mm -hmm. that do it all the time. Yeah. So then sure. it just kind of grew from there. That's awesome. So what about your sphere? Because I know, I have heard of so many people that have started as teachers and been very successful in real estate. Um, just because you're part of a community, you're, you meet a lot of people, you interact with a lot of people. And even though you may not remember all of the students that you had, they remember you. And then they're getting up to, you know, they're growing older and they're starting to look at buying houses and stuff like that. So I know that being a teacher is a really great stepping stone into real estate, even though it seems like it wouldn't match up. So did your sphere kind of show up for you? Did you lean on them? Was there any kind of like call back to that job that you had to try to get business from it? Or did you kind of start fresh and just say, you know what, I'm going to get experience first and then go from there? I, I would say I my sphere probably doesn't include anyone from, wow. from a teaching career at all. Um, I've always been out and about. I, I like to go out in the community. I like to go into the bank when I can. I like to go into the coffee shops. So I always socialize with people out and about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say I'm pretty extroverted. So I know a lot of people just naturally from being about town. And um, I've lived in Swansea and Westport. So I, I have a lot of people from both towns um a lot of uh experience in new bedford area yep. but then also you know swansea to providence area so i you know i have i have a wide network of of friends and family and acquaintances that's awesome and, yeah so um i see a guitar in the back is that yours are you yeah. also musical yep i play guitar um play the ukulele sometimes too and you know I like to, to dabble in a little bit of everything. So let's talk about your creative side because that's, you know, I would say a good chunk of the reason that I was like, I got to have this guy on. <laughs> you're, you're doing real estate. You're doing your thing. You're starting to get deals. When did you decide, you know what? I'm going to put myself out there a little bit differently than most and get a little creative with my social, my videos. That's a good question because, um, when I first got into real estate, I, I viewed it as kind of like a, a weird thing where everybody puts this picture of themselves out there. And it's like a, a JC Penny year photo. old headshot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like like a yearbook photo or like a JC Penny headshot. It's it's weird. <laughs> and it kind of weirded me out a little bit. I'm like, it's like that's it was kind of cheesy. So I kind of just started to make fun of that cheesiness and made like memes of myself um, and just kind of making fun of that, that portrait, that stale portrait. Um, and I, you know, I took like the photo of the 40 year old virgin, Steve Carell, and I, I put my face on it and, and made it a 40 year old realtor, um, <laughs> things like that. And, you know, I started with the memes and then eventually uh, that was probably 
it was probably just memes for the first year or two when I started doing it. Yeah. And even then, like people were like, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> and all I could think of was, you know, as a consumer before I was a realtor, and even now I still try to put myself in a consumer's um, seat. And if I'm scrolling on Instagram or, or Facebook and I see realtor photos, I'm like, oh God. Or I see all these real estate posts. If I'm not looking for a house, I'm just scrolling past it. And I'm like, how do I get people to pay attention? How do I get people to follow me? Um, it's, it's very much a long game, not a short game. And yep. I think people are always pandering to the people now. But those people now, they've already got somebody in mind. They've already got a bunch of people after them. So I'm always just, how do I stay on the radar of people that are a year or two years or three years down the road? Because how do, how do I get them to not follow, like not unfollow me? Yeah. How do I get them to stay engaged and want to see what I'm posting? Mm -hmm. Most of them want to be entertained. They want to know that I'm competent but they don't really care about the house that I'm selling right now or no. the mortgage rates. Uh, you know, I, I mix that in, but mostly I'm just trying to entertain and keep them following me so they don't forget about me. Yeah. And so they don't unfollow me because then they'll forget they ever unfollowed me and I'll never see them again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So how do you come up with ideas? Like, you know, how do you, you're sitting there, you went from memes to videos. And yeah. was that a natural progression for you? Or was there someone that was like, you know, you should probably do video. And then you were like, oh, I could do this kind of stuff with videos. Um, yeah, my first video was uh, Hello by Lionel Richie. And um, I just, I don't know, I just heard it on the radio and I was started making real estate lyrics to it and laughing about it. So I decided to make a video and... and um, and I wrote the the song out. I made the video, and and it was it was funny, and and uh, I think it was a, a great success. Um, and then you know I just started looking for that kind of pop culture that uh, that appealed to Gen X because I'm Gen X, and most most of the people I know are Gen X. I know some millennials and some boomers, but generally my sphere is Gen X. Yep, and. 80s and 90s pop culture is is what I I go for. And Me too. Probably why I love your videos. <laughs> thanks. So, plus also Gen X are you know it's not their first rodeo most of the time. You know I I have some Gen Xers that they were getting their first house. Um, they've been renting for so long, but most of them they they know the process a little bit. They've they've owned at least a house, um, so they have a house that you know they want to buy a new house. They want to sell their other house. So it's it's a multiple transaction thing as well. Um, and I, I want them to continue to use me. I want them to use me in the future. I want them to tell their friends and family about me. So, you know, I may be funny on the videos, but, you know, like that in the field, when I am showing houses and selling houses, it is 100% professional. It's not a joke. Um, but it, it, again, it's it's... How do you get people to keep wanting to see your content? It yeah. has to be, it has to be engaging. It has to be funny and entertaining. And um, if you, you look definitely at other, stand out, you know. Yeah, and and a lot of people won't want to try it. You know, they they. I'm not afraid of copycats. Like most people, yeah. don't want to do it anyway, and it might not be their thing anyway. You know, yeah. everybody's got their thing. Somebody might be really into sports. Use that. You know. Um, I happen to really be into arts and culture and, and music. And I try to, I've always enjoyed comedy and, and just having a fun time. And mm -hmm. I want people to feel that I'm accessible. I don't want them to feel like I'm snooty. Um, I, I've grown up in large houses, 4,000 square foot houses. I've sold million dollar houses. I've sold $200,000 trailer homes, you know, and it, it, I treat everybody the same. And I want people to know that I want, I don't want people to think, oh, he only sells big expensive houses. So he, he doesn't want to deal with me. Mm -hmm. And I also don't want people to think, oh, he's, 
he only sells cheap houses. He can't handle my my yeah. rich, nice yeah. luxury house. Yeah. Um, I can handle it all. I can sell anything. It, and it's really sales is not about opening doors. Just anybody can open a door and say, hey, have at it. It's I always guide every every showing. I I guide them through. I explain everything about the house. And it's also also about marketing and visibility. If if you don't get people to see you and see that house, well, mm -hmm. you can't sell it if nobody shows up. Yep. So I think I do that better than probably anyone in, around here is, is exposure and getting people to look at me, look at me, you know, but um, not in an annoying way. Yeah. Um, and if, if I've got to get a property out there, I'm going to get it seen by more people than, than most people around here are Absolutely. capable of. I love that you brought that up because a lot of the times I'll talk to agents and their biggest stopping point with social media in general is that they don't want to be annoying or they don't want to be embarrassed by whatever they're posting or they don't want their like family and friends to be like, oh, what are they doing? Right. And like, mm -hmm. I always say to them, like, what do you care? <laughs> like, why do you care? If it's something that you want to do, then who cares what anybody thinks? And if it's going to help you to help someone buy a house, which it will, because you're putting yourself out there and they're going to want to gravitate to you, then why does it matter? You know? Yeah. So I love that you said that about like, just, you know, if it's not for you, then that's great. And you're probably, you probably Nick, are not going to have any competition uh, because there are yeah. not many people that are willing to put themselves out there. Right. But my, my take is I'm going to see them in person anyway. Yeah. I, and they're going to know gotta... that you're silly and goofy and fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you've got to talk to these people. You, you, I don't want to meet them for the first time in person. Like I want them to see me on screen. You know, most realtors, they, people don't they they judge them by a picture, like a little picture and some kind of quote or whatever. Like that's not enough to gauge who that person is. So I try to to share who I am so people get uh, an idea of who I am before they even meet me. It kind of it breaks that barrier. Um, it's you're breaking the ice with that person. So they, I, I run into people outside. Sometimes I don't know who they are, and they they say hello to me like I know them. Like they, know, yeah. Because they've seen my content and they 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 know me. They know me. Um, yeah. I don't know them, but they're like, oh hey, how's it been? I, <laughs> so it, it it's kind of interesting uh, experiencing so, that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little local celebrity. You know, I always say to about like Chip and Joanna, you know, if they had never yeah. put their television show, if they hadn't shared their kids and their hobbies and their like you watch that show and it was so successful because it wasn't just them buying and, you know, flipping a house for a client. It was like all of their story, what they love, what they do. It was authentic to them. And that's what made it popular. And if you did see yeah. them on the street, you'd be like, oh, my God, it's them because you felt so invested and felt like you really knew them. So I think that's really awesome. And and it's a testament to the fact that like you're not afraid and you'll take the risk and you'll go out there and you know what if they want to work with you great and if they don't that's fine too <laughs> yeah if they don't i won't hear from them <laughs> <laughs> i mean, never know have you that's actually a great question because like segue i guess because do you feel like have you gotten hate or negative comments on some of these things and how do you take that or you do not get that no i don't actually um I mean, I did post a, my Christmas, one of my Christmas videos on TikTok. There was a lot of, um, oh, at least you've got a house and all this stuff. Like, but it was like, you know, look, it's a parody. It's not about, I'm not actually complaining about my house. Like, it's, it's I'm not going to go into somebody else's house because it happens to be shittier than mine. Just so I can film it and say I want a new house. <laughs> like, Because then that's insulting to them. Hey, your house is crappy. Can I film? this song about wanting a better house oh in God. your crappy house. How would you even broach that? <laughs> right. So I have to use my own house or my family's houses or something like that for these videos. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there's a weird thing in that TikTok community where they, they kind of take things too seriously. Um, TikTok is definitely different. I literally just said this um, to a couple of people on my team, literally, literally within like the last week that we went to go post one of like the videos that we do for the Crush It page, which, you know, we get really good comments and stuff on Instagram and people are super supportive and, and are awesome and, and cheering us on. And then we posted on TikTok and it was like so much negativity. Yeah. And I was happy that there was 
comments because that helps, you know, but I was like, holy crap, what is wrong with everybody on TikTok? They're so angry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's, I use it just to kind of see what happens. Yeah. Sometimes I'll post something on TikTok before the other stuff and just to see if it runs. And uh, if it, if it runs, I'm like, oh, okay, this is probably going to be successful. And all of a sudden it doesn't do anything on Instagram. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> it yeah. So it's weird. I, I stopped trying to chase the algorithms and figure that stuff out. And just yeah. because then at, at a certain point, it's going to compromise my content. Yes. So I just do what I feel is best for me to do, regardless of, of what the algorithms say, because they keep changing that stuff anyway. They're always going to move the goalpost for sure. And, and the more you do it also for anybody that wants, that's afraid of video, the more you do it, the better you get. When I, you know, when I was uh, painting as a fine mm -hmm. artist, you know, easel time. The more time spent on that easel, the better and quicker and more accurate uh, yep. at painting you'll you'll get. It goes the same for anything. The more you practice playing practice. an instrument or just being comfortable in front of video, you just got to do it. If, you if you're introverted, and, this is the greatest business for, for you. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, get out of your own head because yeah. at the end of the day, you're the, you're your own biggest critic. Like, you know. We'll sit here right now and every once in a while I'll glance at myself and I'm like, oh God, yeah. <laughs> you know, like we're only going to judge ourselves. We're going to say, why do we do our hair like that? Or why did we say, or, oh, I hate my voice. Right. You can sit yeah. and say that all day, but no one else is doing that. No one else cares. You're not going to be talking to somebody and have them say, hey, your voice is stupid. <laughs> they would never say that. You, you're talking to them all the time. Like everybody hates their own voice. They all hate how they look on video. Yeah but that doesn't change. You don't look different or sound different when, when you're in person with somebody. No, it's your face. So get it's over it. <laughs> yeah, get over it. Move on. That's so funny. Um, so how do you, like, I definitely want to stay on this content thing because I do think that yeah. it's really what made it, what, what, what attracted me to bring you on today. Cause I really think that it's a struggle point for a lot of realtors. So what is the like cadence? How do you come up with that idea? And then how do you kind of make it come to fruition? Do you have it set in your head? Like I got to do one a week or like, do you have any kind of formalities around it? Or is it just, you know what, something pops up. I think of it, I do it. Like what's your plan? Yeah. I mean, I wish I could be more consistent with it where it was like something every two weeks, but I don't know if other creative people have a, a similar thing, but I feel like creative energy ebbs and flows. So sometimes it's really strong and I will bang out like three songs in a, in a week. And then sometimes it's low and I'll, it'd be in a, I'll be in a slump and I won't create anything. And if I try to, it just doesn't work. So when I feel like it's really pumping and I've got a lot of creative energy, I'll try to maximize and, and, do as much as I can while it's while it's there because it's awesome. not you, it's not always pegged you know you're not always in that zone no nope. um so you got and then it'll come in, it'll come off inauthentic like you said right and, and and it's all about authenticity you know like chip and Joanna Gaines like you you never thought it was an act I mean oh. it seems pretty genuine I'm sure they you know maybe they staged a, a situation, but they're improving and, and coming up with, they're, they're not following a script. No, no um, definitely not. So I, I think that's why if, if you're not, you're not a musical person or uh, into that kind of stuff, then don't try to do that. Try to do whatever your interests are. Exactly. So, if you're into baking cakes or something, you make that connection. I don't know how, how to make that connection with real estate, but, but you know, figure yeah. it out. Yeah. I mean, and it doesn't even have to be a connection to real estate. It could just be that you like baking and you want to share recipes on your page. And then right. in between that, you talk about the homes that you sold. Like yeah, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be cookie yeah. cutter. Ha <laughs> ha. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> Cake cutter. Maybe. <laughs> so take us back to your, like, take us back to real estate. And, you yeah. know, how has that transitioned for you as far as like, have you gotten deals from people that have followed you or, or has it been more of a nurture where they're like, you know what, I really love this guy because of the things that he's doing. Like, what has it kind of turned out for you? Like, what have you gotten from it? Um, I would say like, I don't prospect really at all. 
Um, <laughs> you know, I I, 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 I suppose I could really scale um, if I decided I really wanted to do that. Um, but pretty much everything is referral based. Um, I've gotten people from Facebook. Generally, it's they all know me in some way, shape or form, whether they're a, a, like a distant acquaintance or a close friend. Um, but I've had people on Facebook share my stuff with their family member that I don't know at all. And I've gotten business that way. Um, I've gotten business from old high school friends that I haven't seen in years, uh, but I'm connected on Facebook. So, I mean, it's all people that generally, generally know me um, in for some way. Um, but I would say a lot of business comes from social media. Yeah. And generally, they're not strangers. Um, no. And if they are, they've, they've come highly, they've been, I've come highly recommended to them. Yep. So it's, it's already open and there is no barrier to overcome. Yep. So it's really for you, social media is not a lead generator. It's more of a, a warmer upper. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I'm really coming with the words today. Um, it's really a way for you to have someone get to know you before they even meet you. Yeah, exactly. Do you um, push the videos out any other way or do you just push them on social and that's it? Or do you email them or do you text them to people like any other way that you kind of use to promote them? I've done that, but generally I just post it on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. YouTube's kind of like a, like a folder to keep them in. It doesn't really, unless you're really focused on growing a YouTube channel, it doesn't just do it. Yeah. Um, Facebook, uh, Instagram, they're both, even though they're the same company, they're both very different. Um, I've had videos on Facebook, over a hundred thousand views on them where Instagram, it seems like, I don't know, 20 to 30,000 views is, is an equivalent to that. And then on TikTok, you've got videos like 300,000 views and, but that doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I feel like most business comes from Facebook for me. Yeah. Um, that's, that's yeah. where our generation generally yeah. Uh, congregates. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe a little dabbling on Instagram. I have to say I'm all over TikTok at night. I can scroll until I lose sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. Um, so, all right. So tell us about your deals in real estate in general. What has been, you know, you started out and you were kind of getting your feet wet, but where has your career kind of taken you and where are you at now? Yeah, I would say uh, I started at, I think, the perfect time. Uh, the market wasn't going crazy, but it was still busy enough. My first year, you know, I sold a few properties. Then my second year is when I, you know, started, things started to get real. And um, that would, that was what, 2019, 2018. No, yeah, 2017 was my, where I got my license. 2018 is when I started to sell a few properties. 2019 is when it became it started to pick up, yeah. a real job, a real mm -hmm. career. Um, and then 2020, is when then the pandemic hit things got weird <laughs> things got very weird yeah and then i that's when i started noticing other realtors like oh you know you should go out and, and i i was kind of like stepping back observing i didn't want to be too salesy i was like this is a weird time people are afraid to go out mm -hmm. so that's when i started to like really focus more on entertainment i was like people are stuck at home mm -hmm. they don't want to be sold to i'm just going to entertain at this point and try to help people feel better about being alone and yeah. locked up. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden it was like a switch turned on across the industry where it, everybody was just like, okay, it's okay to go out there. It's okay to sell and it's okay to show houses now and all this mask stuff. Um, but 2020 to 22 were um, not real. Like that was like, yeah. it was, you know, it was um, crazy, sold a lot of properties, uh, but it was like, it was easy. It was difficult to show the properties because you yeah. have 
a hundred people lined up down the road and everybody's got masks. You can only let two people in at a time. And uh, it was like a, I was like a, a conductor. I was like, okay, you go in this door and go up the stairs. Now you go in this door and go down the stairs. You're going to go up this way. You're going to go out that door. And it was all about crazy. You know, yeah. And I kept things moving and kept it smooth by the end, you know, because I do like to explain and talk about the house to everybody that comes through. And I don't like them to wander aimlessly and leave with questions. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I would leave a listing with a dry throat and barely be able to talk anymore because I was talking for like three hours yeah. straight to a hundred mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, it was not hard to sell a house because they would sell in like two days. Yeah. Um, and that's when the, you know, the numbers really went up and selling 20, 30 houses in a year. And, and then last year was more of a, a real year, mm-hmm. kind of like before the pandemic where you, you know, it. You had to work for it. Yeah. You had to work for it. The rates were higher. People were more reluctant to buy or sell and and it was still a good year and uh this year i've got a lot of stuff lined up so now it's starting awesome. things are starting to trickle out now that the sun came back yeah. uh, but well, it's it, cold today but you know other than that yeah. well that's awesome well we're unfortunately at the end this was super fun oh, wow. um but I know it's crazy. It goes by really fast. I sometimes I look up and I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> so I wanted to just ask you my last question that I always seem to ask is, you know, what advice would you give to someone that's watching this? Maybe they're in the same boat that you were in five, six years ago where you're just kind of starting out and kind of getting your feet wet. What kind of advice would you give to that person that's watching and listening to you today? I would say I think the most important thing that I think a lot of agents lose sight of is to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and really see if I was a consumer, how would I perceive this coming across my feed? How would I perceive this person? Um, and, and, you know, try to try to empathize more with, with who they are and what they want to see. Yeah. It's not about, it's not about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not about what you, you can't wait to, to say what you want to say. And you're always just waiting for the other person to, to stop talking so you can keep interjecting with what you want to say. No, listen to them. Mm-hmm. Think about what they want to hear and what they want to see. Mm-hmm. And also be authentic. Don't try to be something you're not because it's not going to work. And you're not oh. going to be, even if you do get successful being something that you're not, you, you know, you're, you're not going to be enjoying your life. No. You know? <laughs> no, it's not comfortable. It's not scalable. <laughs> right. If you are authentic and being yourself, then you can scale all you want and it's, Mm -hmm. you're always, it's not like a job. It's you're just enjoying your life and having fun socializing with people and, and helping them and helping them achieve what they want to achieve. Yeah. I, it's such a good point that, you know, someone who's not willing to put themselves out on social media, but every single realtor will tell you that their biggest reason for being in real estate is that they want to help people. But then they say, oh, but I can't do video because I can't look at myself. Well, that's selfish. (laughs) Really, at the end of the day, it's a selfish way to look at it because you not posting that video that could have helped someone or could have made them call you is now hurting their future at owning real estate. So it's kind of a selfish thing to not put yourself out there, I think, in this business. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people that are not in it to help people. So I I just really want to get people's attention. I want them to use me because I really do want to help them. Money is just the byproduct of, of helping them achieve what they want to achieve. I don't need to focus on that. I want to focus on providing them the best service that they can get and having the best experience. I want them to walk away with a five-star experience. I want them to give me a good review. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't want them to be soured. I don't want, if any regrets, if they have any regrets, I don't want them to be with me. Yes. So yeah. I, I can always say that nobody will ever have any regrets towards me because mm-hmm. I'm never pushing them into choosing this or that, you know, like it, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm presenting them with, with their options and helping them choose, but I'm not 
I'm not choosing for them. I'm not saying this is the one. Yep. Um, and, you know, I want them, I don't, I want to protect them from the ones out there that, that don't, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And don't be, <laughs> don't be that one. Please don't be that one. Exactly. <laughs> if you're listening and you're that one, stop it. Um, well, <laughs> thank you, Nick, so much. I really appreciate you taking the time today to share your, your fun to share. I think that's really like the bottom line when it comes to you, you're fun, you're authentic, you're you, you're, you're creative. Um, and you know, you're, you think creatively for your clients as well, and they really benefit from working with you. So I really appreciate you taking the time today to teach our audience your tricks. Thank you. I appreciate the, the opportunity to, to do this. Absolutely. Well, thank, thank you, you all so much for listening and for watching. Make sure to, and I always point in the wrong direction. Oh, I did it right. Make sure to follow Nick on social and check out his videos for sure. I'm sure that they did not make it this far in the episode without going straight to your social media and checking it out. It, more than likely they did that already. Uh, but if not, we'll put them in the show notes. So make sure to check those out and you know, reach out to Nick if you have any questions. And again, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming and we'll see you on the next episode of The Agents Who Crush It in Real Estate. Thank you for tuning in to the Agents Who Crush It in Real Estate podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, share it with your friends and colleagues and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. If you're interested in being a guest, email us at info at crushitinre.com. Thanks for listening and don't forget to crush it in real estate.